So every time I do a what's the best, invariably I make someone angry with how I score things, or at the very least I confuse them. So I think it's high time that I go through and explain what I rank figures on, why I use those criteria, and why they are weighted the way they are. Welcome to my first ever primer on myself. So, the first criteria I always grade on is accuracy to the classic interpretation of the character. If the figure is not being accurate to the classic interpretation, then it falls to a slightly lesser category of, is it accurate to the version of the character that it's trying to be? And if there's no version of the character that it's trying to be, or it's just failing so hard at being either of the previous two categories that it's not recognizably them at all, then it falls to a yet slightly lesser point of, does it at least look cool? And this has got to be my most contentious criteria of them all. I think almost everyone understands why I grade on the other points, but this is the one that people tell me I'm wrong for using every time I do. So let me explain. The point of what's the best is to help people locate the definitive version of a character. The one where they can say, if I get that, I can be done hunting for this character. If they are either one of those collectors who only ever buys one representation of each character, no matter how different they may be, or if you are someone who buys every version of a character that seems interesting, I am trying to find the one that you can put in your centerpiece display and say, this is now perfect. And to that end, grading on subjective criteria is not useful. I need objective points on which to grade. And to be clear, subjective and objective criticism are not enemies. They do not destroy each other. They are useful for different things, and neither one is superior. I am not indefeatable for using objective criticism instead of subjective. In fact, it's quite the opposite. You can't be wrong for liking what you like or hating what you hate. It's subjective. That's what opinions are. Your subjective response to something. You can't be wrong for your subjective experiences. I say that actually being good friends with a guy who I've seen be wrong about what his opinion is. It's funny because it's actually Transformers related. But I have a friend who went to see Age of Extinction, and he came out being like, oh my god, that movie was so great. You gotta see it. You will love it. And my response was to go, oh yeah? How was the story? And he was like, oh, the story was fucking stupid. I couldn't even follow along with anything that was happening. It was so nonsensical. Then I said, how are the characters? And he was like, oh, they were all fucking insufferable. They are the biggest bunch of douchebags I've ever seen. And Optimus is like a psychopathic monster. He says, kill them all about humans like four times in the movie. How was the action? Oh, it was fucking terrible. I could never tell what was going on. Everything was always way too close to the camera. And I swear there were whole chunks of fight scenes going on off screen. How were the effects? Terrible. How long was it? Too long. How was the humor? Every joke made me want to kill myself. I asked him, point by point, about every last aspect of that movie, and there was not a single frame of that film that he had anything other than pure vitriol for. And still he came away saying how much he loved the movie and that I should really totally go see it while hating every second he spent watching it. I'm fairly sure that what happened is that he was expecting to love it and hadn't really processed just how much he didn't until he started thinking about what he bore witness to. So I have seen someone wrong about what their opinion was before, but as a general rule, that's not possible. Meanwhile, objective criticism, unlike opinions, can be wrong. You are grading on provable aspects. If you say the elbow bends 90, but it actually has a second joint that lets it bend 180, then you are objectively wrong. You are grading on a rubric and you have assessed it incorrectly. So, opinion and assessment are two different things that need to stop being conflated with each other. You can't be wrong for enjoying something, but you may be wrong in your assessment of its quality. And the reason that I tell you all this is, subjective criticism is not universal. How someone emotionally reacts to something does not inherently translate from me to you. However, objective criticism is universal. It doesn't mean that your subjective response to it will be the same as mine, given the figure. However, it does mean that you will have a clear understanding of the figure, and be able to guess what your subjective response will be with a strong degree of certainty. Objective criticism doesn't tell you if you will like it, it tells you what it is. And based on what it is, you should hopefully be able to tell if you would like it. All that is to explain that I chose accuracy to the classic interpretation of the character as the first point to grade on for two reasons. Whether or not you like it, accuracy is objective. I can measure how much the figure looks like the thing it's supposed to look like. And the reason that it's the classic interpretation of the character is because that is the version most people are looking for the definitive version of. And classic interpretation does not mean G1. It means the version that defined all later versions. If there was a knockout or bulkhead what's the best, the classic interpretation for knockout would be prime and bulkhead would be animated. And if it's not trying to be accurate to the classic interpretation, not all is lost. It can be accurate to the version that it wants to be, which is like going from the check plus to the regular check. It's a lesser point, but not that much lesser, and it's lesser because people aren't willy-nilly looking for an IDW Optimus to finish off their masterpiece shell for what have you. In order for you to really earn the title of the best, it needs to excel in its other categories to get that label over what most people are looking for. And if it's not accurate to anything but the creator's own unique take, then it drops down to does it look cool? And that's like going from the check to the check minus. It's still a positive grade, it's getting the check at all. It can still win if it does well enough in its other categories, and something that does equally well doesn't come along while being more accurate, but it's an even lesser overall point because looking cool is subjective. What I think is cool is not necessarily what you think looks cool, so I don't want to value my opinion highly in this regard, because it doesn't apply to everyone. And to be clear, if it looks like it's supposed to, but it's also hideous, that's actually still a small point against the figure. Like, accuracy to a fault is a thing, and sometimes memories of the characters are better off left misrecollected. Then comes the quality grading point. This is pretty much the easiest one to score on. Does the figure not fall apart? Then you're probably not scoring badly. 
However, if you go above and beyond using the nicest materials possible with joints that hold well, you got it chromed or painted to the nines, then it gets the leg up in this point. After that comes posability. This one is pretty self-explanatory. Which figure has the best combination of joints? Usually this is kind of an ass-kicking because often the figures that have the highest number of joints also tend to focus on having the most useful joints at the same time. But a figure could theoretically have a bunch of specialty joints while having everything it can do be limited, while another figure could have no specialty joints, but all of the limbs can go maximum and therefore it can win that way. After that comes transformation, which is uncomfortably close to a subjective point, but I do think that this is a thing that you are able to grade fairly. Is it confusing? Is it easy to remember all the steps, or at least intuit the steps that you've never done before or not done in a long time? Is it fiddly? Is it breakable? Do things fall off? Does it faux form? Does it parts form? These are all aspects that you can look at and come up with a fair and objective grade as to the quality of the transformation. Though, sometimes this one does still come down to a gut feeling. But while I can be too harsh as to what qualifies as a good transformation, I do think I have a solid track record of sussing out the best of the best transformations. If I say it's bad, maybe it's not. But if I say it's good, I can't think of a time I've actually been wrong about that. Lastly is the alt mode category, which is the wishy-washiest of the categories. This one is less dependent on accuracy than the robot mode, because unlike most of the robot modes, the alt modes are often the things that are allowed to be off-model. Sometimes the vehicle mode looks this way, sometimes it looks this way. Which one of these is more often right or sticks in people's heads better? That's a really difficult thing to judge, and often these are the modes that have to suffer the most compromises because they just aren't possible to complete without them. Like a lot of Beast Warmers fall under needing to compromise. So with this one, it kind of boils down to, does it look good? Is it reasonably accurate? The more accurate, the better, but it's not a priority that drowns out all others. Does it have these key features that define who the character is? For instance, Grimlock's teeth are supposed to be his lips. Even though no figure has ever done that, that would be a huge point in the favor of any figure who did. With most of the beasts, it's going to be what the head looks like. With Optimus, it's going to be his stripe or lack thereof. Jetfire, I find to be the exact shape of his nose cone. Overall, this is the least set in stone category. And then after all that, it's a really simple process of going back through and tallying up how each figure did in each category. And price really isn't taken into account unless I need a tiebreaker for some reason. People aren't looking for the best cheap figure, they are looking for the best figure. And if you are looking for the best cheap figure, then just go with the first runner up that you determine to be cheap enough. But that was what I grade on, why I grade it the way I do, and why it's in the hierarchy it's in. Plus some other bullshit that you probably didn't care about. And now it's time for the monthly shoutouts. If you'd like a shoutout yourself, please follow the instructions on your screens. Don't leave anything out that I ask for there, unless you don't want it to be included. And without further ado, King Kyle 5 is trying to earn money through his art commissions to help support his family. If you like what you see here, his commissions are 10 to $15, and he's willing to do fan art of established characters now. Also, he has several charities that he'd be happy to have people donate to in the spirit of Christmas, so those will be linked in the video description as well. Next up, Domi Domi would like you to check out their Transformers collection. I've always been confused as to how to pronounce that, though. Is it Domi Domi or Domi Domi or Doomy Doomy? I've always preferred Doomy. Karate Rigai would like you all to know that he likes Transformers and loves to collect them. And now I'm sure that he likes having Perspective End shout him out. Ghosty wants you all to consider that this is what Wheeljack's face could look like in Rise of the Beasts. And that would be an improvement, though leave the faceplate on. They also want you to know that they are working on their own Transformers story they are calling Shattered Hopes. Which isn't a shattered glass thing. Ghosty will post it on his Instagram and YouTube when he's done. Victor Wilfong would like you to check out his new Tarn fan art for his personal Transformers universe. And he's made a time lapse on YouTube of him drawing it. Looks like he's keeping to his word and being more active there. King Dareth would like you to check out his YouTube and Instagram where he made a video of Ironhide reacting to my roast of Ironhide. I like you much, G had his birthday on the 24th. Man, you have my condolences. Having your birthday the day before Christmas has to be a drag. Like all your friends are hanging out with their grandparents, your parents are probably like, you might as well open your birthday gifts tomorrow. So it's not how the Grinch stole Christmas, it's how Christmas stole birthdays. But nonetheless, I hope it was a great one. Happy belated birthday and a Merry Christmas to you all. And that's not half what I have to say, but it's enough of what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And if you'd like to take it a step further, then please, share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.